this is just one of those days you really wish is not going to happen to you. It just happened to me. So I feel it is my duty to tell you guys uh, what not to do. First, I'll little explain here what I'm doing. This is the tracking generator of the spectrum analyzer. I am in uh, 20 megahertz to 22 megahertz, just so we don't have any uh, bandwidth issues with this shitty cable here. And uh, this is a, um, a normal scope. And um, let's look at channel one, 50 ohms. And I measure like 800 volts peak peak. It should actually be 600 for zero dBm. So I think I measure a little bit too much. So this, this is just to prove the signal level of the tracking generator is not defect in any way. I put the tracking generator to zero dBm. So now let's take the tracking generator and plug it into the spectrum analyzer. You see, there's just a barely visible nothing at all. And of course I can also go and hit the preset. Then it goes to the normal startup full uh, span tracking generator on and you see just a tiny little lift and in here you can of course take the level level and crank it up if you want to and then you see a little bit at the very high frequencies so yeah i killed the input on my spectrum analyzer and this is why you should always and always and never ever try to use your spectrum analyzer without a dc block or an attenuator here in the front because this damn thing cannot handle any kind of dc and if you're measuring on some sort of some shitty equipment where there is a ground uh, lift or an earth problem and you pull the b and c connector it is actually possible to have a connection uh, where there's uh, only connection in the sensor pin and not in the ground in the other end, of course. This is a very quick introduction to how to open this. Two screws here, two screws here. They and they, uh, the feet, they're of course going to fall out. So remember to save them. Um, those four screws, they're actually a little bit longer and then the two screws here on the top behind the handle, they're a little bit shorter. So how to open this thing is actually not that easy, but you pull out here on the back while you you can see there's a little mark here in the, in the plastic, and then you push real hard here. So here's what we do. We push down here real hard and then see, now this is released and then while this is out, we do the same in the other side. We can really feel this is where it is. And then push down and see, now we're in. And that was quite easy, right? So I need to explain a little bit about how to open this because I saw another video explaining a little bit about how to repair this, where all the important how to open is not explained. And of course, we need to remove those three nuts first, and then we can take the screws around the cabinet. So that was quite easy. Now I'm in. I just took all the screws around the edge and then carefully lifted the power supply up. When you can stick in your hand and you remove the fan and the power supply cable and remove it. Now we need to get this module. See, this is the input module. And this is the only thing we need to remove. So it's important to take all those pictures so you know exactly where everything here is connected because we need to take this board completely out to do service on it. They use different length of screws. So just be careful about this uh, when you assemble it. They're really nice and friendly to mark the different length. So that is pretty cool. What I'm doing is I'm always putting all the different screws for the different things. So this is outside cabinet. This is the outside of the first bezel thing. And then this is the next. 
And this way I'm never gonna lose a screw or misplace screws. Remember to use proper grounding and a wristband. Don't want to add any more problems. And this is how it looks like. This is the entire RF front end. And look how nice it is milled into this case where everything is into its own little individual room. We can now take and have a look. And we will see that this looks a lot different compared to other versions I've seen. I'll try to get and this is the other side. Again, beautifully milled. And let's look. So this is the other side. Again, our input. There isn't really a lot of stuff on this side, so it's all about you and all the funky filters and stuff. Isn't that just beautiful? But I believe. We got a complete damage of the front. And look at this model here. We don't have D31 or D33 mounted. There's nothing. And here's called U9. And then we got a C12. And then the U5 is also one of those switch components. Okay, now I finally added another lens. So those are my components. So let's see where is the problem? What is doing what? 